Jason, we're here at the UK Photography Show and uh, I've been doing a few sessions each and every day and it's been quite interesting at the end of the sessions that people have been coming up asking about this phrase that we use when we're doing retouching which is working non-destructively. So I thought, um, although we're pretty busy here, I thought I'd just take a few moments before classes start again just to put something uh, nice and short together to give you an idea of what I mean uh, by working non-destructively. So I'll just quickly show you on this picture here. So this is the final image and you'll notice that this is actually shown as being a smart object and we can see that from the icon in the bottom right hand corner on the thumbnail. Now if I just go over to the picture here before it's finished we can see that we've got all these layers here that go to make up the image and now I'm kind of at the stage here where I want to just do some final finishing touches. I want to go and maybe use like a plugin like uh, Google's Nick uh, Color Effects Pro 4 or something like that. So ordinarily if I was going to work something like non, uh, sorry if I was going to work destructively what I would do at this stage is create what's called a merged or combined layer at the top of the layer stack. Now there's lots of ways you can do that. There's that big long keyboard shortcut of Control, Alt, Shift and E. And what that's going to do is going to put a combination of all the layers below here into one layer above. And you can see when I turn that layer off, nothing changes, even though those are turned off because they're now a combined layer at the top of the layer stack. Another way that you can do that is just go to Select, All, Edit, Copy Merged, and then edit and paste. And that does exactly the same thing. It just kind of saves you having to do a bit of origami, or origami, dan dancing your fingers all the way across the, across the keyboard. So that's another way you can do it. And you can maybe program that as a keyboard shortcut as well. So if we're gonna now carry on working, I'm now gonna have to go to uh, my Nick Color Effects Pro 4. I need to be working on the image. I couldn't have worked on it where we've got this group. So I needed to have the image to work on, which is why I've now created this merged or combined layer. And then I would come into the filter menu, go to the Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4, and then I would come in, once the actual uh, plugin opens up, and then we can start applying some effects. So let's say here we're going to come and use some uh, detail extractor. So we'll add that filter and maybe a bit of cross balancing to add in a real kind of bluish kind of mood, which I really quite like. So let's come down here. We'll go for something nice and subtle. Actually, let's go for tungsten to daylight and we can control the strength there with those kind of sliders. So when I'm using a third party plugin, I can continue to kind of add all these filters. And when I'm done, I'll just click OK. So now then, let's just say that I think I want to add a bit of a light source. So a very, very simple, easy way to add a light source is just to add like a, a blank layer, which we'll just wait for this to finish processing. So I'm just going to add a blank layer, get a, a brush, a nice soft edge brush with a white foreground color, and I'll put a dab on the, on the screen just there, and we'll free transform it, and we'll get it nice and big. In fact, let's just zoom out just a touch. We'll make it nice and big press enter, get my move tool and drag it to one corner. And then I'd kind of carry on doing the retouching. But now what happens if I think, actually I, I don't, don't really like that blue or, or maybe I want to come down here and affect some of the actual dodging and burning. Well, for me to do that, what I've now got to do is delete all these layers above that I've just worked on. So I need to delete the actual layer containing the light, can, uh, delete the one that I applied the plugin on, and delete that merged layer. Now, there could have been many, many more layers that I've worked on here, because sometimes, as you're working through your pictures, you could go to 60, 70, 80, if not more layers. So if way down the line you then think I need to change something, you're going to rework this dodging and burning, and then you're going to have to redo lots of work. So what we have in Photoshop, and we've had it for quite some time, is smart filters. So what I'm gonna do first of all then, for me to use this third party plugin, we've got my dodge and burn group at the top here selected. I'm gonna hold down my shift key, click on the very, very bottom layer there now, and then go to the fly out menu at the top of the layer stack where it says convert to smart object. I'll click on that, Photoshop does some processing, and what it's gonna do, it's kind of like the, the Russian dolls, those little uh, toys that you've seen for years now, where you've got one doll inside another, inside another, and inside another. Other. They're all there, but when you put one inside another, it just appears that there's one doll. And that's kind of like what a smart object is. It's going to get all the layers that you're going to select here, and when you convert them to a smart object, it's do all this processing and put it like you can see into one layer. But what that means is I can now continue to use these plugins or carry on doing more retouching. Let's, let's just go back in here and use the Color Effects Pro 4. It's going to bring up the dialog box. I'm going to do some of the effects again. So there we've got our detail extractor. We're going to go for some cross balance. I'll just apply you know, any old kind of amount there and click OK. Uh, that's going to then process it. But now here's the thing. I can carry on doing my retouching now. I can carry on adding all the lights and all that kind of stuff. But if later on I think, 
do you know, I, I still don't like what I've done with the dodging and burning. Or maybe, you know, way, way down the line, there was a little bit of blemish removal that I did when I first had the image open as a raw file. Maybe I want to make some changes there. Well, here's the thing. We can now come and click, double click. Let's just close that so it makes it a bit more visible. You can see now, here's our, our layer. We've got this little smart object symbol in the uh, bottom right-hand corner of the thumbnail. When I double click on that, Let's just get rid of that dialog box. That'll only pop up once until you click in there and then just click OK. You'll never really see that again. It's just kind of saying that you're now going to see all the layers that were, were preceding what you've just done. So here, now I can come in and make changes to my dodging and burning. And when I just save that, it's going to affect the final image. So it's a completely non-destructive workflow. I can go all the way down. And even the, the bottom layer here has got a smart object. So what happens when I double click on the thumbnail there? Well, then that's going to take me into camera raw so I can now see what my original image was like. And let's have a look at kind of things that we did. Did I do any kind of uh, use of the adjustment brush? If I click on the adjustment brush, here we've got a pin where I click and I can actually come in and make adjustments to the eyes if I didn't think they were actually that good. So you can see by doing all this non-destructive retouching, it's going to allow you the flexibility to come in later on when you're doing your changes. Because sometimes we do get really carried away with our retouching. We get pixel blind, we do so much work, and then we save it. And then when we look at the picture again with fresh eyes, we're like, ah, I didn't quite mean to do that. If we've worked destructively by creating those merged or combined layers, you can't go back. Well, you can, but you're going to have to delete it and then rework lots of layers. But by using smart objects, you can kind of like go back in time. All right, so it's almost like using a time machine. You can go back in time, make effects or make changes way down the line to then get the, get the final result in the end picture. So that is basically what's used, uh, what we call working non-destructively. It's going to save you time, and quite rightly, they've called it a smart object and a smart filter, because it is. It's working smart. So I hope that kind of helps. hope that explains what we mean by the two terms, working non-destructively and working destructively.